Right. Thank you for those of you who've joined us. We're just waiting a few moments uh, for everyone to join the webinar and to get our YouTube live stream started. And we'll get started shortly. Okay. Okay, we are live on um, YouTube now, Renee, and I'll just set up the Arabic interpreter. Wonderful. Let me know when we're ready to go. We are going to get started shortly. We're just waiting um, to get our interpretation services uh, set up and ready to go, and then we will begin. Renee, I apologize. There is one of our student panelists in as an attendee. You you can start if you want, Michelle, um, Renee, and I can get I could going. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So before we do get started, just a little bit of housekeeping uh, for all of our attendees. The chat is closed. However, the Q&A is available for you to ask questions. Les informamos a todos que el chat está cerrado. Прежде чем мы начнем, мы хотим вас предупредить, что чат будет закрыт. I'll pause for a moment, Margaret. We can hear the interpreters. Yeah, I'm just going to, I don't know why that's happening. Okay, one second. We'll just be a minute. Perhaps I need Reiko here. She's a whiz at this now. <laughs> It's not behaving. Okay. Things are, oh, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, just start, Renee. I don't want to hold you up. Um, the interpretation services has been set up? I think so. Okay. 
All this right. is the Spanish interpreter. Can you hear me? Yes, we shouldn't. Okay. Yeah, I don't see the. Okay. Uh, I'm the Arabic interpreter here. Can you hear me? Yes, and we shouldn't. We're just getting you set up. Sorry, Renee. I don't know what's going on. Things were going so well. No worries. And to our audience, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we're just awaiting our services to be set up. Nobody is set up. Okay, I'm gonna have to redo this. Okay. Okay, I think I've got it. I can't see the screen anymore. Okay. Okay. I should start, Margaret. Are we good to go, Margaret? I believe so. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce you to the people who will be speaking this evening. With us here this evening, we have Peter Chang, System Superintendent for Continuing Education, Secondary Alternative Schools, Adult Education, Educational Partnerships, Delegation, and Heritage Months. We also have Rizwana Jaffrey, Principal, Secondary Alternative Schools West, Dennis Lopes, Principal, Secondary Alternative Schools East, Waco Fuentes, Centrally Assigned Principal, Secondary Programs and Admission, and my name is Renee Rollins. I'm the Coordinator for Guidance, Career Development, and Student Wellbeing. We are also pleased to welcome staff and students from our Secondary Alternative Schools with Grade 9 programs. This includes Rob, Robert Prezano, Curriculum Leader of Avondale Secondary Alternative School, who is joined by student Sarah. Monika Rosas, Curriculum Leader of Alpha 2 Alternative School, and our student representative from Alpha 2 is Clementine. We have Ian Esquival, curriculum leader of City School, and our student from City School is Mads. We have Stephen Bates and Ashley Gertz, assistant curriculum leaders at Oasis Alternative Secondary School, joined by Vanessa, who's a student at Oasis. We have Renato Frere, curriculum leader at Delphi Secondary Alternative School, who is joined by Alyssa, who is a student there, and Emily Wadsworth, curriculum leader of Subway Academy One, who is joined by Caitlin, who is a student there as well. After our land acknowledgement, we will be sharing information about optional attendance, alternative education, and alternative schools in the TDSB. We will be hearing st from staff at Alpha 2 Alternative School, Avondale Secondary Alternative School, City School, Delphi Secondary Alternative School, Oasis Alternative Secondary School, Subway Academy One. We will also be hearing from some of our amazing students about their experiences at these secondary alternative schools before we close today's information session. I will now invite Caitlin from Subway Academy One to lead our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge we are hosted on the land of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and the Inuit peoples. Thanks very much for joining us this evening. My name is Reiko Fuentes. I'm the centrally assigned principal for secondary programs and admissions. I'm going to speak very briefly about um, an operational procedure uh, that's involved when students are looking to apply for September admission in grade nine 
in our alternative schools, so the schools that you'll be hearing from this evening. Students who are applying to alternative schools in grade nine for admission in September uh, are required to fill in an optional attendance form. This is a form that's used across the TDSB when students are looking to attend a school that is not their designated school by address. And all students who are applying to alternative schools, this is the scenario. Uh, and so all students, whether they are current TDSB students or not, need to complete an optional attendance form. For the purposes of uh, for this form, grade nine alternative schools fall under the category of specialized programs and schools. There's a little screenshot on the slide of how uh, it's included within this category. And uh, students who are applying uh, to alternative schools can also apply to two regular school programs using this same form. So all students have the opportunity to apply to two specialized programs or schools, which includes the alternative schools in grade nine and two regular programs uh, for schools that, uh, that are not your designated school by address. Next slide, please. So the timelines uh, for the optional attendance form are the same as they are for specialized schools and programs and for regular schools. Um, you need to have the forms submitted in um, no later than January the 28th by four o'clock. Uh, additionally, you will be hearing back about acceptance on Friday, February the 11th, and students need to indicate uh, what their destination is, what, what offers they, offer they may be accepting for grade nine, uh, no later than Tuesday, February the 22nd at four o'clock. And you need to communicate your final choice both to the, the school that you will be going to, your current school, and also you need to submit your course selections through my blueprint, and that applies to TDSB, current TDSB students only. In our schools, when um, applications exceed the number of spaces available, uh, a lottery will be conducted or a random selection uh, for students who will be able to be offered admission. I'll be here later if you have questions that you want to put into the Q&A about more specifics about the optional attendance form, uh, the deadlines and the timelines around that. Thank you. And good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Peter Chang, System Superintendent for Secondary Alternative Schools. And I would like to extend a very warm welcome to each and every one of you for being here tonight and spending some time to learn about, uh, learn more about our secondary alternative schools a wonderful option for many of you. And the fact that you are here tonight to listen, to get some more information, suggests that you, do, you are curious, and we love that. We love the fact that, cur that curiosity is going to be one of the traits that you are bringing forward to um, when you consider applying to our secondary alternative schools. Our secondary alternative schools, as you may see on the screen, uh, um, we are comprised of 21 secondary alternative schools across the entire system. Some of these schools you will be able to hear about tonight. And the other ones that you won't hear about necessarily tonight are um, spread across the city and they have different entry points. And that's and, and tonight's focus is on the grade nine entry point. And we wanted to share that space, share that space with you today. Um, our schools are very much uh, small schools by design and that is on purpose because we know that we'd like to support our students in as many different ways as possible. And having a small school setting is uh, one of the main components of that. As you can see on the screen, we're very much dedicated to the alternative, um, the alternative um, uh, school uh, pedagogy, looking at unique ways that we can serve students and just really looking at any possible way to engage and um, provide uh, exceptional learning opportunities for them. It's a safe and supportive learning environment. And uh, I think that if you have a chance to pop in and uh, spend some time with us, you might find a really, really good spot for your child. I'd like to pass, pass the uh, next uh, me message on to Principal Rizwana Jaffrey. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Here having some glitches with my video feed already. Uh, so thank you, Peter, for uh, allowing me to share some more details about our alternative schools. I'd like to elaborate on a couple of very specific things that we take a lot of pride in. And students, I'll be speaking to you about our alternative schools. So we know that learning is easier when you feel like you belong to an environment that you are learning in and you feel supported by caring adults. 
That's why our schools, as Peter mentioned, offer a small school setting, and we focus on engaging in relevant curriculum with the goal of personalized learning. So in alternative schools, you are learning alongside learners like you. Our teachers are passionate about the subjects that they teach, and they want to bring in student voice, social justice, equity, and things that matter to you into their curriculum. They are passionate about ensuring that the learners in our school achieve to their fullest capacity. Most importantly, they care about you and your needs. So in our school, you form relationships that matter in your learning. We know that when you feel good, you learn well and you succeed. Secondly, we focus on a student's first curriculum attitude. If you are a learner who needs more individualized and personalized education, if you feel anxious or stressed in a large school setting, and you're academically capable but need teachers to help you find your strengths to move you into the next level, then you belong in alternative schools. Students of all skills and ability levels attend alternative schools. We offer courses in all subject areas as much as possible in our small environments, including arts, math, sciences, social sciences, to help you prepare for your future. We help you grow from where you are now and build your skill level to help you recover credits you may have attempted before and help get you to your goal, whether it be graduation from high school, work, college, university, as you choose. And thirdly, in our small, small school settings, you have an opportunity to get to know all of your students as well as the adults. Your, our staff create strong relationships with students, ensure we understand and can support your needs. Most of our schools have child and youth uh, counselors and uh, youth workers, as well as we have itinerant special education resource teachers to support both your social, emotional, and academic needs. TDSB school social workers and psychologists provide support as part of our support school teams, and we provide excellent nutrition programs, bus tickets, and connections to community agencies should that need arise. Thank you. I'll pass on to Dennis Lopes, Principal of Alternative Schools East. Sorry, Dennis. I believe your your volume, your uh, microphone is muted. You have to start again. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for uh, noting that. Uh, I said wonderful things. Too bad I miss it. Everybody missed it. We'll try again. So, welcome, parents and students. Thank you very much for uh, extending to us some of your time and your attention while we share with you the wonderful programs and schools that uh, are available to students moving from grade eight to grade nine but also to add to the information already provided by about alternative secondary schools, I just wanna share with you a number of other schools within our umbrella of alternative schools. Uh, there are five quad mestered schools. All of us have heard over the last year and a half, two years, what quad mestered means, but five of our schools have always been quad mestered from their inception about 15, 16 years ago, where students can concentrate on taking two courses at a time, uh, over a nine week period. And so students have a, a, a pace and a workload that is more suitable to them. None of those schools are being presented today, but we provide that information to you in case you have a student who's already in high school, or if in the future you would ever need to call on us and look at schools that are quad mestered. So tonight we're gonna to be focusing on uh, uh, six schools that have entry points for students coming from grade eight. And you will hear the following phrase time and time again tonight, that students have a sense of belonging, that there are people who are working with them that believe in them, and that we are hoping and planning to uh, assist them to become the people that they want to become. And these are what I call my three Bs, belong, believe, and become. And so we hope that all the experiences that our students have had and will have will always focus on these three things, that they belong, that they have people who believe in them, and that we're preparing them to become the people that they wish to become. So hopefully tonight you will have a, um, a lot of questions uh, answered. You will, And if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to us 
uh, even after our session this evening to get more information about any particular school. So thank you very much for your attention. And Renee, it's back to you. Thank you. And so now we're going to move on to the virtual open houses. Uh, you'll be hearing from six schools and up first is Alpha 2 Alternative School. Thank you, Renee. So my name is Monica. I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, I am uh, the, hey, let me know if you I can't see it. Um, I am the ACL for student success and a teacher at Alpha 2 Alternative. So welcome and have a little short presentation. So we, and if you have questions later, we can, we can answer that. Uh, so I just wanted to start with some quick facts about our school, uh, just starting with our location. Uh, we are located on the Bloor subway line, a five minute walk uh, south from Bathurst Station. We have recently moved and are in sharing a building with Bloor Collegiate and Central Tech on the third floor. Um, Number two, um, our name. So um, Alpha 2 is not to be uh, mistaken with Alpha Alternative School. So within the TDSB, there's Alpha and then there's Alpha 2. And so Alpha, um, which is actually one of the oldest um, alternative schools, I believe, through the board, uh, is own services uh, kindergarten to grade six, but then Alpha 2, which is this school, is middle to secondary. So we actually offer two entry points um, starting in grade seven, but also in grade nine. So in, ter in terms of tonight's presentation, focusing more on the entry point for interested grade nine youth. Um, the other thing in terms of our name, uh, the people who founded Alpha 2 were actually families and educators that were um, originally part of the Alpha uh, Alternative School. And uh, the reason why they called it Alpha 2 was they said that each uh, of the letters stood for a lot of people hoping for an alternative. And based on the similar philosophy, which I'm gonna speak a little bit more about, uh, which is uh, self-directed learning um, and by being being part of a community that runs uh, through decision making in consensus. And then finally, uh, in terms of application, because of the unique nature of our school, as I will explain uh, further as well, uh, we are actually a continuous intake uh, school. So uh, in different than some of the other optional attendance models. Um, at any point of the year, we offer information sessions for interested guidance counselors, families, youth, um, and if it is a right fit, um, students can begin uh, at the school at any point of the year. So I just wanted to talk a little bit more about our school philosophy uh, and breaking it up in terms of the two main pillars. Uh, so the first pillar uh, is the idea of self-direction. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, grade seven to grade 12 public school and the idea is that each person who comes in and actually the name that we use for them is actually not student. We name them mentees and actually the teachers, even though we are teachers, uh, we call ourselves mentors because the idea is, is that each uh, mentee is there and already has an idea of what it is that they want to learn. They already come in with certain kind of passions and interests uh, that uh, and things that they personally value and want to create their own curriculum around. And then it's our job as the mentor more to help facilitate experiences, resources, um, individual kind of uh, learning plans, goal setting, kind of coaching uh, to help them reach their goals. And so that's the one, the one piece of it. And then the second uh, part of it is the idea is that each self-directed learner is though learning within a community environment. Um, uh, and so the, the negotiations of, of living within that environment is where the consensus decision-making comes in. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. So just to kind of give you some examples, I just have some photos of different activities that you can see that's happening in the school or and have happened in the school. Um, and so as you can see, typically our school attracts a lot of youth who are interested or already um, practicing um, arts uh, or the, um, the arts, music, 
um, as well as the humanities and social sciences, uh, as well as sometimes some of these youth come from families that have interest or have some experience in homeschooling as well too. Um, so here we just see some examples of some visual art, of sewing, of um, different kinds of knitting, embroidery, puppet make, textile work. These are all photos from within the last uh, year of, of the school. Um, uh, baking is also, and cooking is another integral kind of programming piece at our school. Um, we try to uh, offer as many kind of experiential uh, opportunities for our mentees and uh, there's usually like a lot of a lot of different things happening all at the same time within a day so for example as these students are you know uh, baking in the in the kitchen there could be another group that's you know working on their sewing in the art room um, alongside that, there is also more structured, uh, smaller group um, kind of class-like environments where mentees uh, will come together to talk about anything from career skill building to, you know, systemic discrimination to, you know, learning music theory. Um, and so there are opportunities for more structured learning as well, too. Um, this is just a yeah, photo again of our music studio and uh, just some, you know, a lot of, we actually have quite a few musicians and, uh, and people there. And the idea is that, you know, sometimes there's some collaborations, people jamming and working together on pieces, but then sometimes some individual, individualized uh, learning as well happening. Um, just showing you also some opportunities, you know, the idea also around um, the self-directed learning piece is that, um, as I mentioned, the experiential component that we really uh, believe at the school that learning just doesn't happen in a school, uh, but it happens outside in the community as well too. So again, just really being led by the mentees in terms of what their interests may be. And if there is a group that is interested in you know, being outdoors um, or um, you know, being part of the local community in different ways that we as mentors try to facilitate that, whether it be through, you know, co-op experiences, um, you know, phys ed um, and uh, dual credit experiences as well too. Um, this is quickly just to show a little bit of a trajectory of how like a self-directed curriculum kind of looks like um, that usually we find that most uh, youth kind of go through during their time at Alpha 2. So usually it starts off where they kind of start to discover this option of like when they don't actually have to uh, take prescribed classes or take um, or have tests or be working towards actual formalized credits that, you know, they go through, they still do go through a process of learning and the learning looks something like starting off with the discovery phase, moving into kind of exploring um, some, you know, particular interests um, that, um, that they like to pursue and then focusing in on those interests and then later kind of expanding out um, into the world, which is usually once they get to that piece that they're ready for you know, uh, life outside of the school and other post-secondary opportunity, workplace, um, life in the community um, opportunities. Uh, so uh, again, because the the unique nature of the school um, and because it is so based on the student's interest and each one is working kind of on their own individualized curriculum, there is no, um, uh, and so this is really important uh, for, for families and folks to know that we actually do not provide any grades. We do not um, do any testing, formalized testing, which means that this does not result in any credits. And then overall, there is no um, diploma that at the end of your experience there that you are trying to work on to attain. So instead, this is more of a portfolio based school. So the instead of the diploma, each of the mentees are working on on a portfolio from the moment they start with us, whether it's in grade seven or grade nine, and that portfolio changes over time. And you work with that portfolio in conjunction with your family, with your mentor, with your outside mentors or um, experiences that you're a part of. And, um, and, and then there's opportunities for you to showcase your portfolio, which is, um, uh, I think Clementine, or one of our students is gonna talk about that a little bit more, um, the opportunities that there are to, to showcase. 
Um, so then again, the second piece is um, once you know yourself as an individual, you're working on your own individual goals, um, you might be thinking that you want to be an artist or you want to go to school as an artist and whatnot. The idea is that you know, you're know you working on your own goals, but you're also still part of a community, um, a, a, a space. And so through that, we also try to really provide those networking experiences um, that um, uh, like literacy, like uh, communication experiences experiences by basically daily and weekly uh, community circles where the mentees come together and make important decisions about how they want to run the space, run the school, and, uh, and, and, and share with each other possibilities for collaborations and whatnot. Um, and the way that decisions are made when we do want to make full decisions for the whole school that is, gonna, uh, that is going to affect everyone in the school in some ways is through consensus, which is very different than you know, a vote by majority. The idea of the kind of consensus that we practice is, is that every person's voice does matter. And because of the small numbers um, you know, within the school that we have, we do take the time to really come up with the best um, solution that everyone can uh, live with in the end in terms of whether it's in terms of like, you know, keeping the art room clean or, um, uh, you know, uh, the dates of when they would want to, uh, to do their next portfolio night or that, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, so finally, just to um, to sum up some of the highlights about Alpha 2, I purposely chose these photos um, because, you know, sometimes on the outside, it can look like a little bit of a, of a, of a chaotic space. Um, and, you know, there definitely, it, it isn't structured in terms of just a regular, you know, where there's classrooms and, um, you know, uh, desks and, 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 you know, someone at the front of the class. Um, but at the same time, you know, one of the pieces about, the, again, the school philosophy is that it values this idea that learning is not necessarily always linear and um, and it also allows for potential spontaneity and improvised creations and growth to to come forth as long as it's in a space that's you know being respectful to other people and you know being done in a safe way um, that these are some of the the important kind of uh, of pieces of alpha to alpha two. So finally, you know, in terms of knowing of whether you might be a good fit for Alpha 2, if this is a place that you'd be interested in learning more about, it's a good place for youth who already have an idea of what they might want to do post-secondary and want to build a portfolio towards that goal now. And there are some people who know that already from a very young age. Um, uh, and also that it's okay if you don't quite think you're completely self-directed yet, that's okay. But as long as you are willing to be open to learn how to do that in a community with other and being responsible to the community around you um, and a, with the help of the adult allies in the space and the mentors and the parent community, the outside community, uh, that it's not a structured environment. So definitely people who are looking for more of a structured environment, um, this, this would be a, a little more out of the box uh, place. Um, and then finally, the, the, and this is really important that through this, you know, a lot of people ask that question. They're like, okay, well then, but can people get into college and university if they want to afterwards? Like they, people understand, okay, maybe I can get a job, but can I do college or university? And the answer is yes. And we have had um, many successful alumni over the years. We're 15 years, next year, we're gonna be celebrating our 15 year anniversary who have um, successfully been able to get into um, either the college or university of their choice with their portfolio or either as a mature student um, or um, as a homeschooler uh, application. So there are ways, it's not the traditional pathway, it is a, a more non-conventional pathways, but this we are here also as the mentors in the space in the school to help you when you are ready to make that next step if that's what you choose. Um, and that's pretty well it. So, you know, if there, anyone's interested in any more information, we do offer individual information sessions for interested families. So feel free to um, reach out to us, either email or phone. And uh, once, if you are interested after the information session, there is an application form to fill out, um, which then, uh, so that you can then be considered for a trial because it is a very unique space. So usually the trial is the opportunity where you get to try to come um, and check it out for yourself to see if it would be a good fit for you with it before making a decision.
So thank you so much for your time. Um, hope to hear from you. And now I'm going to pass it on to Avondale Secondary, uh, Alternative Secondary School. Thank you. Um, just let me get started. Just having a little trouble here, sorry. With the there we go. Okay. Present. Okay. Welcome to Avondale Secondary Alternatives Virtual Open House. My name is Rob Pisano. I'm the curriculum leader, guidance counselor, and teacher at Avondale. I would like to welcome all students and parents. It's great that you are informing yourselves about these great alter alternative education options for your children. I'm gonna start with a little bit of the history. It has been a 50 year tradition at Avondale. This program was founded in 1971 after the late 60s. Uh, we had a student group in the late 60s, early 70s that petitioned the board to deliver a different way of education. So not a different curriculum necessarily, just a different way of delivering education. So founded in 1971, it was one of the earliest accredited alternative programs in Toronto. What makes us alternative? Uh, the size, the smaller classes, small uh, school community, also the style within the classes that students experience, which is a dialogue, critical thinking and collaborative learning. And the relationships are really important. It's a very nurturing environment. Teachers are on a first name basis and there's a lot of cooperative and collaborative learning opportunities. Um, what is an alternative style of education? So basically dialogue-based classrooms, as you can see, developing and nurturing relationships, supporting self-advocacy, students and staff working together and students actively involved in their learning. So essentially, in a nutshell, it's the same curriculum. However, it's, a, it's delivered differently. Why learning at Avondale is effective? Um, I wanted just to... Uh, show you this pyramid. This is not an exact science by no stretch. It was created um, by William Glasser. But what I wanted to indicate is the retention, the level of learning that occurs um, when we're in the bottom rungs of that pyramid. And when we involve students or discuss issues with students, then the retention tends to go up with rather than what you read or simply what you hear. So through involvement, there's a better level of learning. The typical grade nine course offerings uh, that we offer at Avondale. And at this point, I wanna let you know that currently this year, we are not offering grade nine. Um, we're offering a 10 to 12 program. Our hope is that we are able to reinstate grade nine because we've traditionally been a grade nine to 12 school. These are the courses we would typically offer in grade nine. So you're essentially your English, math, science, geography, and a, a host of, um, visual arts, guitar, music, physical education, food and nutrition as electives. The courses offered at Avondale, these are the courses this year offered between grades 10 to 12. So all the courses you see are courses we are currently offering this year. So again, we offer the compulsories with a, a good mix of uh, electives, mainly within the arts and social sciences, humanities, okay? We do offer the higher level math, as you can see, and some of like the biology 11 and 12 as well. So it's a good mix. What we tend to do, we kind of enhance the program for students in grades 11 and 12, because sometimes as a small school, you can't offer the array of opportunities in courses that are offered in large collegiates. So we stretch out to board programs like the dual credit program. And this has been a great program. All the courses you see listed here, were taken by students within the, the last year. So anything from animation art to animal behavior, the music effect, uh, students are really liking this and it tends to 
enhance the program they take at Avondale. We also offer a chance at the OYAP, the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program, and we're expected to have two students as part of that program in semester two, one in transportation and the other in tile setting trade. So we support we, you know, the best we can all the pathways. I'm gonna talk now about collaborative learning and extracurriculars. Um, just as an example, this week, this is a project. I've taken these pictures just this week. Um, most of the pictures you see are actually pretty recent. This is a project where students have uh, created welcome packages for Afghan refugees. So it's a great collaborative learning um, opportunity. The art class created the cards you see there. The, the whole school contributed to the actual packages. The English class wrote the welcome letters. So great opportunity. For the Day of, National, for the Day of Truth and Reconciliation, we had a documentary viewing, a reflective walk, and then a town hall discussion. So I don't like to refer to these as assemblies because assemblies tend to mean they're quite large, but we have about 30 people sitting in a circle discussing these issues, these very important issues, and it becomes very fruitful and engaging. Um, this is something we did for Islamic Heritage Month. Uh, we watched the documentary Life Without Basketball and the webinar with the subject matter, Bill Kiss Abdul Qadir, which was really cool. And these are, uh, this was another initiative by the art class this year. Uh, they created an original coloring book. Uh, you know, everyone contributed from the art class. And so we printed it out and distributed it amongst anyone who was interested. We also have a, fun, a Friday fun activity hour. This was in, instituted by students and that's the beauty of alternative education. Students can kind of mold and shape the way they learn. And it was early on in September when students said, you know, it would be nice to have one hour where we could just unwind before the weekend. So the Friday fun activity hour was inst instituted and we, you know, anything from crafts to, to games to puzzles, uh, ping pong and basketball are also popular at, at that time. Another thing to note is our gymnasium is open to students every single day uh, in the morning from 8.30 to 9 currently, uh, during the morning break, during lunch, and af in the afternoon. And I know this because I open it for students every, every single day, and there's a lot, of, um, a lot of fun that we have in there. These are other things. We had the Theola Ross documentary. She's an Indigenous queer. Um, uh, filmmaker. And we also had a live webinar with Theola. That was a great experience for students. We also keep in touch with our alumni from the first decade, if you can believe it. And our award-winning alumni poet and writer, Stuart Ross, gives us the poetry workshops, which is really cool. He hasn't done it this year, but is going to do it second semester and did in fact do it last year. Those are other school-wide workshop webinars you can see. We have the child and youth self-advocacy advocacy all the way down to cooking healthy and expensive snacks, uh, resume writing, etc. cetera. Um, we usually, because of COVID, this has kind of taken a, a step back, but we usually really take a lot of field trips. And when I say a lot, like maybe once a month, we're, we're out, these are kind of the popular ones we do. We do the Hot Docs Film Festival at the Bloor Cinema. Uh, Leslie, who runs as the educational coordinator, was a catalyst and teacher at our school. So that's how we have the connection. The World Press Photography Exhibition is another. And of course, gallery trips, contact photography festival, galleries, etc. cetera. Um, I just wanted to um, show you the magnificent artwork. This, all, all this artwork was created this year at Avondale. Um, we, anything from lino cuts to digital art, uh, students get it just amazes me how such a small group can create such wonderful works of art. And it's really quite amazing. I'm, I'm amazed every day when I get into the school, the, the quality of the work and just the, the beauty of it. It's just quite, quite something. Um, I also wanted, there's other program considerations as well. We have a full-time uh, child and youth worker on site and nutrition program providing daily lunches and snacks. Basically, it's a smaller environment with an emphasis on mental health and wellness. I'm gonna show you now our beautiful location and campus. It is in the Young and Finch area, and located at 24 Silverview Drive in Willowdale, in the Young and Comer area, just north of Young and Finch. Now, you know Young and Finch can be quite chaotic, 
However, when you step to Avondale, it's like an idyllic paradise. I mean, you can see that, right, by the photos. It's, it's strangely like a, a beautiful pocket of, of peace. Uh, we're really happy to have a wonderful campus. There's Young and Finch. I'm just uh, where the gold building is in this aerial shot here. You can see the, we're surrounded by parkland as well, which is really, really nice. Uh, there's our front doors, our lobby. So I'm going to just show you the physical space right now, okay? Uh, in the lobby, we showcase student art. So we have like our cabinet of curiosities where students create works and we change it on a regular basis and have, uh, you know, so we celebrate the artwork. This is the hallway. There's one hallway, so it's very difficult to get lost. Um, you can go down the hallway or up the hallway and your class is either on the right or the left. That's usually the way it works. And that's, that's, a, good, <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, this is our English, Social Sciences and Arts and Humanities class. And this is the reading area in, the, in that same classroom, okay? So we have a nice sort of comfortable couch reading area. You can see that there. We have a wonderful guitar music program. A lot of students who are beginners who didn't want to take guitar, who were kind of like apprehensive, are doing pretty well, I must say. There's a whole different array of levels, but they're doing quite well. This is our uh, math, science, health, and nutrition classroom currently. Our visual arts studio, we have a beautiful visual arts studio and our resource room and activity room. This is used for lunches. This is used for activities and breaks, et cetera. This is where students can unwind, students work on puzzles. You know, we have a science lab and uh, science lab classroom as well. And there's a picture of it there with students working at the lab. That, we use that this year for science 10 and biology 11 and 12. Our gymnasium, which is an elementary gymnasium, but for the size of our group, it really works out to be a lot of fun. We pull out the picnic tables, uh, picnic table, the ping pong table rather, um, and the hockey nets and sometimes play basketball games between uh, great teams. It's a lot of fun. We use it for yoga classes, drama classes, lunch programs, basketball and ping pong, um, coffee houses and other school events, okay? Uh, so what kind of student applies to Avondale? Students that benefit from a more personal setting, students that have anxieties in larger school settings, students that may be dealing with mental health issues, uh, those that are academically capable but would like a fresh start. Uh, students, we, but we get a lot of students from a home or private school setting that want to try an alternative program. Students also that are academically capable but have different learning styles. So successful Avondale students are those that are independent and show initiative. They're curious, enthusiastic, and engaged in the learning. They're creative. They're committed to uh, punctuality and regular attendance. There's no alternative to that. That helps with being successful. They have the desire to contribute meaningfully to the Avondale alternative community and have a commitment to building respectful, authentic relationships. And that's probably the most important. Our grads have gained admission to all of these post-secondary institutions over the course of the last, I mean, I could say 10 years. Um, we had someone get into UBC last year, Rotman School of Business. I had a visit from alumni who's doing well there. So, you know, I know parents are often a little concerned about alternative schools and how they fare. Uh, in my experience, they fare equally with any other school in the board. Uh, as long as the, the admission requirements are met, students tend to do really well. I'd like you to sort of check us out on the Facebook and on Instagram. So please uh, have a look there, those are updated. Those are a great way to kind of see the school's culture, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's kept updated. It's really a nice way to kind of touch in and see kind of what kind of, what, how the place runs. Um, and if you are interested in applying, please, uh, please email me and or call the school and I would be more than happy to provide a tour of the school if you're interested if you have any other questions I appreciate your time your consideration and I would now like to pass it on to City School for their presentation thank you
thanks. Uh, I'm seeing a screen that says Avondale. So thanks, Rob. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I just, I'm from City School. Uh, it's a, uh, I don't know if you can see me or not. <clears throat> I can't see me, so that's fine. Um, the, uh, I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint uh, presentation and talk about our school. We're a legacy school, which means we're, we've been around since 1980. So I'll pull up the presentation and share my screen with you. Great. <clears throat> so we uh, were part of SEED, which is uh, uh, similar. It's part of our family of nine schools. And uh, so there was a desire to have a di slightly different direction. Uh, we are located right now in a beautiful building, Waterfront Neighborhood Center School. It's at the base of Bathurst and uh, Queens Key. We're on the third floor. And we have a full floor and we have a room that's in the uh, on the second floor as well, which we use. Uh, and we're part of, uh, even though there are 21 schools, we're part of the uh, Alt-9 schools, which mostly are legacy schools from the previous Toronto Board of Education. Um, so, something's not happening for me here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we share the school the, in the building itself. Uh, there are four other uh, organizations, uh, the Waterfront School, which is a K-8 school, the Waterfront Neighborhood Center, uh, with whom we collaborate quite a lot. Uh, we have Wi-Fi throughout school. We have a chemistry biology lab. Uh, science is important to us, STEM programs. We have a student lounge in our library, and we have obviously the library. You can uh, go in there, work on computers. You can also work on um, the, uh, it, there's an area in the back, which you can just hang out and do your work if you want. We have a media center, a room 38, which has uh, upgraded computers, very powerful computers, uh, loaded with Adobe Suite, so students are editing uh, and they are doing Photoshop, those kinds of things. Room 21 is a music performance space, which I'll show in a few moments, and we also have guest speakers. So last week we had a, uh, a group from Planned Parenthood, we did a virtual meeting with them, but we also had another session uh, with some uh, uh, social workers who came in and talked about uh, consent and uh, healthy relationships. Uh, I'm a guidance uh, teacher as well as, as a, uh, the curriculum leader there. I have an office, I have a private counseling space uh, beside that office. Uh, we have a drop-in room with our youth worker, Adam, who I believe is on the uh, call tonight, the Zoom call. Um, and we have uh, in the Waterfront Neighborhood Center downstairs, we've partnered with them. We have access to a lunchroom, a dance studio, which we have used in the past for graduation. And we also have access to a gym down there. <clears throat> this is uh, room 21. So we have our meetings in there. We have a general meeting once a month to talk about a range of issues, including uh, we award students who have excellent attendance uh, with a gift card. And we also have a several awards that are based on leadership. We have one called Pete Cram Award, which is based on the notion of quiet leadership. Um, so that's somebody who's helping somebody else. They're not necessarily in a club, but they are showing leadership and they are modeling behavior. That's really helpful in a community like ours because we work hard to create that sense of belonging. Uh, we don't have a hierarchy of classes. Our 12s, uh, 11s, 10s, and 9s mingle together. Uh, so here you can see the space uh, set up for speakers, but we also have some uh, weight room uh, materials there and we have uh, music performances. Music's a big part. We have lots of keyboards, guitars, and uh, this semester I have a OISE teacher candidate who's coming in and she's going to be doing a music uh, program. She's a vocal and piano person, so she's going to do an extracurricular club. Students come to us from right across the city, from the mainstream schools, the mainstream large uh, um, collegiates uh, like Malvern Northern. <clears throat> they also come from other alternative schools. We're quite fluid. Sometimes we're grade nine and then um, not all of the alt nine have uh, grade nine. So sometimes our students are with us for a while as a transition to go elsewhere and vice versa. So we are full nine to 12, but uh, we have emphasized our grade nine uh, we responded to a request from parents who wanted us to, um, we had had grade nine when we were created and we uh, stopped doing it for a while. And then we were asked if we would continue, if we would start it back up. So in 2014, we explored that and we brought it back in. So we've always been set up really as a full school for the grade nines and uh, that's an important part of who we are. Um, Students that come here, they're curious, they're compassionate, they care about other people, they're open-minded, uh, community-minded. A large uh, part of the request for our school was because there wasn't at that time 
a place for LGBTQ plus youth to go to from grade eight. So we are a safe place for that. And for students that are in transition, um, non-binary, all those uh, kinds of students who want to feel like they that they really belong as uh, as they are and who they are. We have uh, three full-time teachers, of which I'm one, an office administrator. We have an educational assistant who's in uh, uh, five days a week, Dan. Um, he also does our nutrition program. Um, we have a part-time itinerant special ed resource person who's in uh, one and a half days a week. We have our child and youth worker who's in two and a half days approximately. And we have a social worker who is in the school today checking in with students and has a private area on the second floor to speak with them in confidence. Um, we, uh, Student governance and clubs, that's how students are involved. They're involved extensively in the school in many ways. We've just gone through, we're just finishing up a food drive, uh, which was a student's idea for the Daily Bread Food Bank. Um, and so you can see they're kind of clustered around the boxes that are behind them. They've been going out to, in front of the school and they've been handing out leaflets. We're in partnership with the Daily Bread Food Bank where they've been handing out leaflets and raising awareness we're also partnered with the Waterfront Neighborhood Center, so the box for donations is in their lobby. Um, so they're involved also in workshop facilitations that ranges for one another, but also we used to, pre-COVID, we've done a lot of workshops with the Waterfront School, everything from literacy and reading uh, to puppets um, to a lot of eco schools work uh, with the senior grades there um, and anti-bullying workshops. Uh, we have Safe and Caring Schools Committee, uh, which is uh, advising us on how to make uh, things, you know, more equitable and to accommodate uh, uh, more diversity in our school. We have peer learning sessions, uh, and that can be everything from, you know, showing one another how to cook to knitting to actually, you know, uh, academic work. So we have tutors, some tutors. We uh, have been involved in eco schools for many years as a platinum school. Um, special events I'm going to speak to in a moment, and we have a nutrition program, which is uh, we have uh, once a week, we have a special early bird breakfast. Today it was um, quesadillas, which uh, was uh, one of our students, Jay, uh, made quesadillas for uh, the students. Last week it was pancakes and uh, French toast, which was Noah's favorite. Um, and uh, another week it was um, kind of uh, a breakfast uh, sandwich uh, with egg and cheese. But in addition to that, every day we have a rollout of uh, uh, fruit and juice and uh, dairy of some kind. Often it's cheese, but sometimes it's yogurt. Uh, we have in the past uh, done things like plant trees in Hyde Park. Uh, we've uh, downstairs in the Waterfront Neighborhood Center to the east of the building, they have a really wonderful garden that uh, was started not that long ago. And one of our students initially uh, Mateus was involved in the inception of that. And so the boxes that you see there, uh, he had a role to play in that and it's now become quite a remarkable garden. And so we in are involved in those kinds of eco schools, environmental initiatives. Special events, you see here that we have the usual Halloween uh, was uh, a lot of fun with students dressing up. Um, we uh, have different festive celebrations. Tomorrow is our uh, festive holiday, students will be going off. And so we've provided gift bags for them. We have a hot lunch for them um, and we have lots of goodies um, and we do the usual celebrations and the students generate, uh, you know, they're the ones who generally come up with the um, ideas for these. We have once a year uh, in May, uh, COVID willing, we're going to have our Island Day, which is a leadership and a fun event where we take the whole school over to the Toronto Islands and have a range of uh, games and also brainstorming for the following year, some of the events that we'll do. Um, we have access to a barbecue in the uh, Waterfront Neighborhood Center courtyard, which is on the main floor. And we often use that as a fundraiser. Musical entertainment, as I mentioned before, um, we do have access to the gym downstairs. And that's something that our youth worker, child and youth worker, Adam, uh, would be coordinating. Um, and I uh, mentioned the PLSs before, and we do have clubs. So the way it works for clubs is the student just proposes the club, and if they can find a teacher who is willing to take it on, then, then we do that. Um, some of the things about our school is that we, what makes us alternative, I think partly is that we operate uh, from, uh, we, we're created on the notion of, cre of um, um, critical pedagogy, which is the notion that we examine issues of power 
And that includes issues of power uh, among the staff. So we're self-reflective about how we express our relations. We're on a name, first name basis with students. And we often will, uh, you know, sort of try as much as we can to uh, equalize so that the students really feel like they have a, a significant voice. Um, the other thing is uh, in terms of how we're uh, alternative is we're very good at adapting the curriculum. Um, we can meet students' credit needs by combination of courses. So I can remember a couple of years ago, we had a, students who needed a, wanted a writer's craft and they also wanted a drama. And so we brought them together and we had students writing the script for the students that performed it, that kind of creative combination. And also this year we have independent study often. So I have two students doing an independent study to fit it in their schedule. And also next semester, I have uh, um, a combination of an English nine and 10, but with a literature uh, embedded literature course that a couple of students need. So the older students who will take that will become mentors and tutors within that class. Uh, so those things are tech, not technically clubs, but they are ways in which our students will interact in, uh, in the classroom and outside the classroom. Uh, student engagement, here's to Shyla. She we had Stripes and Patterns Day. We have a weekly uh, or bi-weekly costume event. Uh, before that was hats and hair, wacky hats and hair. And here's to Shyla who won uh, for her combination of patterns and stripes. And she's in front of our food bank uh, because she was also helping to pack the bins that are there. A um, few years ago, we did a uh, big initiative uh, for Syrian refugees. We collaborated with a community organization. At the time, we had to raise $10,000 and our school raised $2,500 of that so that a, a Syrian refugee family could be adopted. So uh, if a student comes forward with an idea for uh, some kind of social justice initiative, then we've, that's what we do. Timetable, classes start at nine. They're 75 minutes long, four classes per day. There's a one hour lunch and uh, we have a nutrition break, 15 minutes in the morning between periods one and two. Each uh, course occurs each day in the same sequence. So it's easy for students to understand. And Friday is a shortened schedule. So the students get out at uh, 10 at 12.32 actually. Uh, course selection, uh, we have uh, grade 11 students taking generally three courses per semester, but our grade nines and tens take four. We combine some courses so that they have an opportunity to, you know, we break down some of the, of the hierarchy, but also sometimes uh, it allows us to offer courses we might not otherwise be able to offer. Um, and we also, within all our courses, make certain kinds of cross-curricular connections. So social justice is a big uh, issue for us, uh, addressing issues around LGBTQ+, but also anti-Black racism um, and, uh, you know, transphobia, a lot of things that come through we bring them right across the various courses, but that would also apply to environmental awareness across the different courses. Um, so that cross-curricular piece is something that creates a commonality among the various courses and the teachers collaborate to have that happen. Do a lot of credit recovery. Um, we have students sometimes who come in, uh, we're semestered and they're coming from non-semestered. So we try to work with them to make sure that they can recover courses because they give that up but also students who aren't as successful because the, their lives interfere in some ways. So we find ways to um, make them be successful by using credit, credit recovery. And e-learning is offered uh, to every school. So we use e-learning extensively for courses that we're not able to offer. Uh, most of our students will uh, go on to university uh, post-secondary of some kind. We're an academic pathway school, um, but uh, not all do. In the past, well, this year I've just been meeting with our, uh, I'm looking at notes here. I've just been meeting with our uh, graduates this year. They're choosing to go into liberal arts, social work, kinesiology. Um, we have uh, two interests in film, one in business, one's creative industries at Dryerson. Um, so we've had them go off to, you know, uh, McMaster for life sciences, meds, engineering, uh, computer engineering quite a diversity, but we also have students who decide that they'll go work and they become, you know, eco-tourists and uh, canoe instructors and a range of different kinds of things. So we offer the uh, three kinds of pathways here, applied college, academic university, and we have quite a few interdisciplinary courses, uh, which are uh, cross uh, between different types of disciplines, obviously, like a media course that we've run in the past. Uh, we have a living curriculum, we adapt to what's happening in the world, we follow what's happening in the world, it changes, we use field trips, workshops, guest speakers to enhance that 
uh, and make it uh, relevant to what's happening in the world. Um, and then we have the special events. So every April we have an Earth Day Summit. Uh, we collaborate generally with the Waterfront School and invite parents into that uh, to make it uh, uh, a really important uh, community building event. And we invite uh, people from the community as well. Um, we have volunteering. Uh, it's harder in COVID, but uh, we've obviously had students who would volunteer in the Waterfront Neighborhood Center, St. Stephen's Community House uh, uh, Child Care Center. Um, we have had students in the past involved in the in Ontario Waterkeepers. We're on the water and it's a really great opportunity. Uh, all our classrooms look out over the water. It's really remarkable. Uh, it's good for your uh, mental health. Um, and uh, so we see what's going on on the water and uh, we have a view of uh, Toronto, which is really gorgeous. Um, we have, uh, as I said, we've had students involved with younger students in uh, mentoring capacity and also through our Eco Schools uh, initiatives. Uh, senior Science Annual Trip, obviously there hasn't been anything rec more recently. Uh, this was to Mono Mills. We generally have Senior Sciences, our biology chemistry group would collaborate to, and go on a trip of some kind. In terms of grade nine specifically, uh, we've put a lot of emphasis on our grade nine. This year, the courses are digital arts, English, math, science, visual arts, and uh, expressions of Aboriginal culture. And depending on enrollment, we have in the past offered uh, geography and drama. Those are courses that I teach. Um, and then we have uh, project-based learning, which you probably heard about. And uh, so students can propose. We'd like them to go deep sometimes in a project and to, uh, through a discovery model, be able to explore something that's really of interest to them. So an example would be a student who is uh, in art, wants to work on a mural, for example, and so we would allow that to happen. So we accommodate that, uh, that the different styles of learning, the different uh, interests in learning, uh, that uh, in order to uh, really have students uh, uncover their own understandings of the world. So some similar film would be a similar kind of thing. We've had students make some really interesting films and we have some uh, students out there in the world who've graduated who are filmmakers. Uh, so if you're interested, we would love to have you come into the school. Uh, this is the contact information for us. We do have a website, we do have a Facebook page, and we have a uh, Instagram and Twitter account. Um, and so uh, I, and we're part of the family of schools, we're part of the 21, but we're also specifically part of our Alt-9 family. Um, you probably don't need to see this, but if you come to an interview, this is the kind of thing that you would need. We prefer you come for an interview so you get a sense of the school. I, it did too this morning when students came in and it lets them feel what the school is like, like and talk to some students and get a sense of where we're coming from. And that's it for me. So um, I will stop sharing and I will pass it along to Delphi. Okay. Thank you so much, Ian. I'm just going to share my screen here and share sound because I do have a video that I want to play at the end. Let me show my video, my face actually. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you can all see this. So uh, thank you everyone. Uh, so, you know, I think we can see by all the presenters so far, very passionate about alternative education. We know uh, through leading our schools, how it can literally change lives, save lives and propel students towards greatness. So I think uh, it's coming through with the emotion and spirit and uh, it's fantastic places. So it's an honor here uh, for me as well to be here and, and discuss um, Delphi, which is my school. Um, so you can see here with our motto, they rise by their own wings. So it speaks to the independent nature of, of our students, the, the uniqueness uh, of their individual journey. They rise by their own wings. So they come to us, we you know, provide them with the skills and knowledge they need to become self-empowered, then one day go out and flourish in the real world. So they're already very independent, they self-regulate well, they have uh, an appetite, a curiosity for knowledge and learning, but they need, like in some of these other settings that have been presented, a smaller space right now uh, in, in terms of the place they're at in their lives to, to come into their own in, in a safe way. So the, as I said, to one day go out into the world and flourish. This is just sort, sort of the agenda that I have. Uh, so who are we? What is Delphi? Which kind of, what kind of students thrives at our school? Um, where, where are we? A bit on social justice, our commitment to that, uh, our focus on well-being, mental health specifically, 
uh, a lot of the extracurricular activities that we support at the school. A um, couple of uh, visuals of some of our amazing artists. We have amazing uh, students doing great uh, artwork. And then, I, as I said, have a little video that uh, hopefully will capture the essence in a more, even more visual uh, way. Uh, and of course, Dan Slopes is our principal as well. Emmanuel Mora uh, works closely with us, our VP, and uh, Wendy Alicia, our fantastic office administrator. So when you call the school, oftentimes you would get uh, Wendy uh, answering, and uh, she's always there to help and a huge part of our team. So where are we? We're near the intersection of Midland and Finch. Uh, so not too far from uh, Scarborough Town Center. So depending where you're coming from, uh, but easily accessible through uh, public transportation, just north of the 401 as well. Uh, so who are we? So a small school setting, uh, like, like some of these other schools, uh, for self-motivated learners who are intellectually curious, think critically, they like to question things, they have a thirst for knowledge, they're open-minded, and they work well independently on their own. Um, so we offer a pretty rigorous academic program. Uh, most of our students do go to uh, university, though we support all pathways, not all do, but it just so happens that many of them do go in, down that route. Um, the students come to us for different reasons. You know, anxiety, depression, mental health challenges are some of them, uh, but everyone's unique. So, you know, it, it's, it's impossible. We, and we don't want to pigeonhole and, and, and label either. Everyone has their own journey. For some students, they need a smaller space to thrive. A larger setting right now is not gonna work for them. So they come to schools like Delphi, to, which are safe, welcoming, inclusive, and they can adjust and adapt. Um, as, you know, right now, considering the pandemic situation and, and sort of transferring back from remote learning, it's, it's, been, it's been good because again, it is a smaller space. Uh, students are anxious, uh, families are anxious about safety protocols. So being a smaller space actually works uh, in, in our favor, because in some ways easier to manage than some of the larger schools that are, of course, doing their best uh, as well. Uh, so students with strong learning skills, time management, organization, um, organization who take initiatives. So when they do need some support, they reach out to the teacher. Uh, when when they're maximizing those skills, they they, they achieve good results uh, at our school. Uh, our I'm going to get into the breakdown of our schedule our traditional schedule right now, it's a little different because of, of COVID, uh, but it's one hour classes, four, six periods a day, uh, four classes, generally speaking, grade 12s will do three uh, semester, uh, but students would have two independent study periods. So that's when they're actually on their own, maybe working in the resource center or in our student lounge uh, or other places in the school uh, where you know they're sort of on their own. So they have to create a little schedule. Do they have homework that they have to complete, assignments? Uh, is there an opportunity to reach out to a teacher and connect and receive some additional support? Or maybe they're just going to have their lunch or socialize with their friends, because that's an important part of the high school experience as well. Um, so, so that self, you know, uh, self-regulation is very, very key uh, for our students. But of course, staff are there. We have a full-time education assistant and we provide support. It's not like they're completely on their own. We are there. Uh, but generally speaking, because of, of the setting of the school, uh, students do, do need a degree of independence and self-regulation. Safe and inclusive space. As soon as you walk into the building, you're greeted with a warm smile. Uh, we're proud of our school. We like to showcase the school. And, you know, it, that, that's really embedded in, in everything that we do and, and who we are. There's this common understanding that everyone has a unique history and unique identity, a unique journey. And, and because of that, it just, it, there's full acceptance of everyone. And, you know, and that's not something to take lightly. Uh, you know, there's obviously challenges in this world um, and, and finding these spaces is, is really, it's really a beautiful thing. So it's, it's really a privilege to work, to work there and support the students uh, as I do. So we support them to find uh, their authentic selves, the emotional, mental health, physical health. It's all about balance. When all those things are taken care of, students, you know, are set up for, to achieve optimal personal growth and of course, academic uh, success. Uh, we have things like a nutrition program. Uh, we have an arts program, ninth to grade 12, physical education, ninth to grade 12. We also have our own gym. So all, you know, this is one way in which we say, listen, it's, it's, it's the actual curriculum of the courses, of the, the more, the sciences, the maths, the social sciences, but we also need to cultivate other aspects of our, of our being because 
life is about moderation and unhealthy balance. We actually had a mindfulness period before where we taught students breathing techniques and different strategies to cope with stress and to just to manage anxiety. Um, okay, so just gonna move right along here. Um, so the one-on-one -on -one support is, is something that attracts a lot of students to, to our school. Um, students and teachers foster strong learning partnerships based on trust and respect uh, because it's a staff of five, six, depending on the year uh, and the staffing situation. Teachers come to know students really well. And if we teach them from grade nine to grade 12, we know their strengths, we know their weaknesses, we know their areas of interest. There's a strong rapport. We work closely with families or any support unit that's there to help the student. Um, and so it's really, it really becomes a family. And by the time students graduate, you know, it's, you've come to know them so well. And it's, it's, it's almost sad to say goodbye, but you really feel like, you know, you work together as a team with the student being part of the conversation and, and the strategy, strategy of success every step of the way. And it's, uh, it's, it's a highlight of the school. Also being small, and I know the other schools can attest to this, staff can come together, we teach the same students, we can share best practices. You know, some, if I'm having a challenge with a student in my class, I can speak to uh, another staff member, you know, what's working, what's not working. And, and where we can, we involve the, the student in that conversation because it's about that empowerment as well. And then cross-curricular teaching, because we do have that uh, interaction that happens uh, so frequently, we want to reinforce skills or you know, key concepts. So maybe if we're talking about something that, like climate change, which a lot of our students are passionate about, uh, maybe in science class, they're learning what are the causes of climate change. In English class, they're learning to write a letter uh, to, to the member of parliament, right? To, to advocate for, uh, for change in, in that setting. So this is something that also we can do uh, because of, of who we are. Uh, school-wide initiatives. So in many ways, we kind of mirror a larger school because we do have a lot of, of, of these things happening and they build that sense of community and belonging that uh, uh, Principal Lopes uh, talked about, identity and spirit. So school icebreaker, uh, these images here are, we're taking from this year's. Uh, of course, all the protocols were followed, safety, but it was great to get outdoors. This is the park, this, this is, you know, our gym class often goes outside in good weather. Uh, you can see how beautiful it is just to breathe that air and, and to roam free. Um, so, you know, fantastic experience there. We had a Terry Fox run. We raised almost $400 this year. We always do it. We went for a, a safe, safe distance walk. Halloween week, Remembrance Day assembly. We did it hybrid style. Students through Google Meet in our student lounge uh, did the whole thing. They had a, a, a skit that they follow, a script, sorry. Uh, a couple of videos. We honored uh, those who have been impacted by war and tragedy uh, in our school community. So fantastic job. Our student council is very strong. Uh, community agencies role show. We've had colleges, universities, public health, public library, different community groups come and speak to our students. They used to come in person. Of course, now it's all uh, on, on, online uh, for safety reasons. Holiday Spirit Week currently underway. Custy Cafe, semi-formal, year-end barbecue graduation at the end. So, you know, you, you get the full experience. Uh, there's nothing that students experience in a bigger school that they can't experience at Delphi. Uh, it's just on a smaller um, degree. Okay, so, uh, so we are semester school, we have a blended learning model. Again, I'm, this is, I'm talking about the traditional uh, format of, of Delphi. Uh, so one hour classes, the remaining uh, you know, time to meet the ministry hours uh, was uh, um, done online. So actually when, when COVID hit and we had to pivot to remote, our students were quite uh, well equipped to do that because they had that experience. We all had Google Classrooms or Brightspace already in existence. So for us, it was actually uh, quite, um, quite an easy transition. We support grades, students from grades nine to, to graduation, capacity 120 to 130. That's sort of the, the, the maximum that we can support. Nine to 3.30, I mentioned before, four, six periods a day, one hour long, four classes, grade nine, it will be four classes with two independent study periods. Uh, we offer all the compulsory courses, uh, most at the academic level, and also a lot of uh, electives. So French, uh, grade nine through grade 12, art, physical education as, as well. Uh, I mentioned before multiple pathways. Uh, most of our students do go to university, but some go to college, some apprenticeship, trades, they're all valid. It all depends on 
who the student is and ultimately what will make them the happiest. And that's what we will support them uh, with. Connections outside, e-learning, night school, dual credit, which was mentioned earlier as well. We also connect our students to maximize uh, timetable options. So we're small, but we're very well connected and we make it work. Uh, so equity, social justice, safe space, these are all key hallmarks of, of Delphi. It's embedded in all that the teachers do in the environment that we create, that the students help create, and we create it together. Uh, we, we talk a lot about the brave conversations, especially nowadays, uh, that need to be had. And those can be had in a more, more effective way, we believe, when you, you have that safe space. And that, you know, it can get a little uncomfortable in the classroom discussion or maybe an, an, a project that, that a teacher has assigned. Uh, but if our goal is to achieve a more equitable society, a more fair society, and to make amends for the past, then we can't shy away from it. And our students are fantastic leaders. They're, you know, they advocate for this as much as we do. And it's, it's just, it, it, it's a wonderful thing. They're very passionate about it. Um, and that passion also comes through the extracurriculars, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah, but focus on mental health. We're very flexible. Uh, we adjust timetables. We adjust uh, due dates and what assignments can look like. And we always involve the students in, in these conversations uh, because there's multiple ways of getting things done. And all it takes is a little time, a little creativity, flexibility, and, you, and we can make it work. Uh, and that's what we do. Um, extra support staff, we have a full-time education assistant that supports us. We have a social worker that comes in once a week and a spec itinerant as well. But if necessary, we have a school psychologist, mental health nurse, and when required, we connect with those supports because it's all about meeting the student needs and ensuring that they have the support and resources that they need. Uh, extracurriculars, again, big part of our school. And I, I know Liz is here. She's going to talk a little bit about that in a little bit. But student council, students against apathy, gender and sexuality alliance, fitness club, yearbook. This is actually the cover of the last yearbook that we had, which covered the last two years, which Alyssa, who will be speaking, actually designed. So, you know, this contributes so much to the school environment. There's this vibrancy, there's a spirit, and they promote school unity. Um, so, and you can start clubs, whichever ones you're interested in, if we don't have them yet. Here's just some images of our students taken from the yearbook, uh, just to give you a sense of who they are. Um, our clubs, you can see obviously pictures on, on the right, uh, reflecting the, the period, the era that we're in. With the, with the masks and the physical distancing. And then just some of the amazing artwork that our students produce, which is also in the yearbook. And just, we're really proud of this as well. Okay, so now just a video and then I'm almost done here because I know there's another speaker after me. So hopefully you can hear this. Hi, Renato, I think- My grade eight, one. you got it. We've got to go that? to the next presentation. Okay, so- so just quickly, so that's the admissions procedures. And yeah, feel free to give me a call, send me an email or check our website for more information. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Renee. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Stephen Bates and I'm the Assistant Curriculum Leader at Oasis Alternative. And my colleague is... Ashley Gertz, I'm the other assistant curriculum leader at OASIS. Um, so we are going to tell you a little bit about our school. Steven's going to share his screen for me. Um, <clears throat> OASIS is a little bit unique because we're actually three schools in one. Um, our arts and social change campus is at um, Brant Street at King and Spadina. So that is the campus at which we offer um, a grade nine program. Uh, but we also run the Oasis Skateboard Factory, which is for students age 16 and up. Um, and that sort of starts once you have your junior credits, compulsory credits under your belt. And that's run out of Bathurst and Dundas at Scouting Court Community Center. Um, the Skateboard Factory is like an immersive experiential program in which the students create their own brand and build skateboards and sell them and work with community artists to do um commission work and all kinds of stuff. So they get all their credits through this like immersive skateboard program. Um, and then we also run the triangle program, which is um, a high school for LGBTQ 2S plus students. Um, and that generally starts in grades 10 or so. Um, 
So I'll be speaking mostly about arts and social change, but if you do have questions about our other programs, you can reach out to Stephen or I. Um, a lot of students start with us at Brand Street and then transition to the Skateboard Factory or another um, program. Stephen, I can see your speaker notes when you do that. Um, so the sort of the three pillars at Arts and Social Change, we really believe that students do well when um, there's a, there's a, focus on equity and the arts um, and putting students first. So sort of our three pillars are the same things you've heard from everyone else tonight. And thank you um, for being here and listening. I know it's been a ton of information. So we try to be student centered. You know, we, we take the time to get to know every student who comes into our building. We really spend time with them learning who they are and, and where they come from and what their values are. And we try to build lessons and build assessments around um, around the students and around their background and things that honor them as people. Um, we're flexible in the ways that we allow our students to demonstrate their learning. Um, and there's also lots of opportunities for students to take on um, leadership roles. So uh, in terms of extracurriculars and clubs, um, this year we have a D&D club that was started by a student in grade nine who has that skill. And I think in a small environment, like an alt school, the students who may be in a, you know, in a cohort with 100 or 200 other grade nine students might not um, get that opportunity to step up and take that leadership role. But in a smaller alt school, we see that those students have that opportunity to grow that right away. Um, the second pillar uh, is just anti-racist education. We, you know, try to focus anti We try to take an anti-oppressive approach in all our work. Um, we try to bring diverse voices and diverse texts and use members of the community to help us learn um, from an anti-oppressive lens. Um, and mental health is um, our third sort of pillar, mental health and well-being. That's very foundational to how we run our school, right? So I think we um, at Oasis, and I think in all the alt schools kind of understand that when students feel that they're heard, when students feel that they're seen, um, when students feel like we know them and we're trying to know them or we're trying to understand them, that when they have that sense of well-being in the space that they're in, um, that that's when the best learning can happen, right? That then we can build on that and build all the skills. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Steven to talk a little bit more about some specifics. Uh, thank you. Hi, sorry about that. I realize there's a screen sharing issue that I can't resolve right now, so I will continue on and hopefully everyone can see uh, my current screen. Um, our school is small. We only have three classrooms, um, but within that we can offer a range of school courses um, for grade nine students, including the visual arts, geography, grade nine math, grade nine science, English, as well as we offer students history and other compulsory credits through their grade nine and 10 years. Similar to other schools, and as Ashley has touched on, we um, focus on individualized education in which we can sometimes tailor courses, assignments, and group projects so that everybody um, can feel that they're a part of their assignments as well as part of their school work and their learning so that they are part of the creative process. For instance, in our art classes, our students um, have a choice of assignments, have a choice of materials and media. And in addition to that, the options that are available to them um, um, exponentially grow as they continue in our program as their um, options for within English, humanities, and the arts, and including drama, um, will open up if they attend year after year. We bring um, artists into our classrooms. Currently, we're bringing um, Indigenous educators into our NAC 10 and um, illustration programs. And hopefully in the spring, we'll be offering the social circus with our drama instruction program, which is an interactive sort of social circus program in which students uh, engage in performative activities, including slack lines, um, devil sticks, they learn to juggle, as well as building communication and other skills um, with students that they are 
um, getting to know through programming at our school. We're right downtown, and so we do have a small park near us that we can get to um, to escape the classroom environment. Our nutrition program right now is sort of a grab and go thing. We have sandwiches, hamburgers, chicken burgers, pizza, um, as well as milk, fruit, cheese, and other things to keep you going throughout the day. Our school is scheduled from 9.30 until 3.30 daily with four periods. And we have short breaks between classes for kids to grab some fruit, grab some milk, and head outside for a breath of fresh air. In addition to that, we have in school support of having a CYC who is at our site multiple days a week and also an itinerant um, special ed teacher who comes to our site one day a week to support students with um, extra needs and to um, work with them on their IEPs as well as other learning needs that can arise throughout the year and depending on courses that they are taking. We also have a social worker who visits our school once a week and can support students um, through counseling, in addition to housing supports and other things that can arise um, that can sometimes help um, or can hinder a student's success. So we want to make sure that we're looking at students holistically in our program and not simply just um, their academic success, but rather um, the whole person. Um, we want to do a quick little walkthrough. This video is not long. It's only about three minutes, but it gives you an idea of what our school is like and um, how you get into our school. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Welcome to Oasis Alter. In the heart of downtown, right near King and Spadina, you'll find our little school on the third floor. Come on in. <clears throat> Press the buzzer to gain entry and head on up. And here we are. Our school's current real project. Our art room, geography room. Our main hallway, snacks and lunch are set out in front of our calendar. This is our English and drama room. math, science, and where food and nutrition will once again take place after COVID protocols have ended. Our office where our CYC and social worker are found. And you exit out the North Stairways. We have two all gendered washrooms, one in the front and one in the back as well. Our office is here where during a normal school day, you can find Ashley and Stephen, our assistant curriculum leaders.
some art done over the years by our talented students. So thank you for considering Oasis Arts and Social Change and hope you have a good day. So thank you very much for taking a small tour with us and learning a little bit about our program. You can contact myself or Ashley Goritz. Our emails are available here on screen, as well as you can speak to our OA to connect with us about enrollment for next year on the phone number listed on the screen. Thank you very much. And now on to Subway One. Thanks, Stephen. Okay, uh, I'm Emily Wadsworth. I'm the curriculum leader of Subway Academy One. Thank you so much for attending this evening and for being so patient. Um, and as you can hear that, uh, yes, again, we're all so incredibly passionate about alternative schools. And you know, I have to say that all of the alternative schools are a great option for a secondary experience. So what's special about Subway? So Subway is a small, quiet, uh, community-based school. Um, our goal is about creating space for students where they feel respected, where they feel they are belong, and where they feel that they have a voice and they're heard. Uh, and this is, this is what we see as being key to a student's success, that when they have that voice um, and when they're heard, you know, that allows them those opportunities to when life is sometimes getting the better of them and getting in the way of school, they know that they can reach out that um, to a trusted adult at the school to make a plan to get back on track. And so that's one of our core goals at Subway is, you know, help students to get back on track where life has sometimes gotten in the way of school. Um, it's always difficult to kind of, ex um, you know, round out why a student or who comes to Subway because students come to Subway for a myriad of reasons. But one of the core pieces that we do see is students coming to Subway for struggles of mental health and anxiety. But, uh, you know, it's life has gotten in the way and they've been derailed at some point or they just don't feel that they, they fit in that big collegiate setting and they want an alternative, something small, somewhere they can feel that they have an individualized education and they, they are heard and seen as well. Um, um, you know, I always say that success is built on those, those positive uh, relationships and we aim to be flexible and really meet the needs of students uh, as they go through that high school career. We specifically offer programming uh, that's targeted for nine through 11, although every year we take students to graduation. We have students that graduate every year. I'm very pleased that when Caitlin talks more about Subway and her experiences that she is one of our graduates this year and moving on to university. Um, and so one of the key pieces about um, helping students, especially when we're such a small school, we're a school of three uh, teachers, three incredibly caring and passionate teachers. Um, it's about really working the TDSB system for the student. The TDSB has so many amazing opportunities for students out there. And so for, for us as staff, it's about knowing what those opportunities are and complementing the programming that we're able to provide uh, at Subway with all of the amazing programming that exists within the TDSB. Um, some of the courses that we focus on, as well as, of course, the compulsory based courses. So offering courses in uh, Indigenous education, in queer history and equity studies, uh, in gender studies. A really cool course that we have running this year is blogging, vlogging and podcasting. And that actually came about because in an English course last year, our focus was podcasting and it really took off with our students. Uh, it was a big hit. We found that students were really engaged in the English course in a new and different way. And so through examining that, that moment, those experiences, 
Uh, and then also taking, we often uh, provide courses in music and a variety of pieces, so be it guitar or music production, but using the technology of our music production course and blending those two pieces, we actually have students designing websites, doing marketing, but then um, analyzing podcasts, understanding them, and now getting to the point of developing uh, and recording their own podcast. So it's pretty amazing to see these experiences come about. Um, I find that many students that come to Subway have incredibly creative souls. They might not be traditional artists. Some of them definitely are. We've had amazing artists come through our doors, but I find that all of our students have incredibly creative souls. We like to try to find those opportunities to provide, um, provide them with the opportunity to express that. So be it our crafts course, photography, uh, the myriad of music courses we also offer piano and in the past we've done um, a vocals class as well uh, and when I go back to talking about what a community school is that's an important piece for our music program so part of the curriculum of a music program is performing and often in a collegiate setting that's in the big auditorium and it can be kind of scary so one of the pieces that we do at Subway is every semester we host a coffee house uh, again, it's a way for our community to come together. It's an opportunity in a pre-COVID, hopefully again in a post-COVID time period uh, for families to come and share these experiences um, and for our students to perform, but to really celebrate the achievements of our students. Um, other opportunities for that community piece is it's about breaking bread for us. And so again, pre-COVID, um, we would always have opportunities for students and staff to sit down and break bread together. So we would regularly have hot meals where students and staff are cooking together and in, enjoying the meal together as well. And then that happens again every season, every winter season, we have um, a larger dinner where we encourage and invite families to come in and celebrate with us as well but also creating opportunities where parents can come together. So every semester we try to create spaces through hosting and facilitating parent talks where parents can come together and sometimes break that isolation that I find um, in my observations that parents sometimes experience. If they feel that their children are struggling through school and sometimes feel that they're the only family with a child who might be struggling for school for whatever reason it might be, it's not true. Right. And, and the more opportunities we create where we can break those, those pieces of isolation, um, we can create more spaces where, where caring adults can come together and really support our young people. Uh, so just moving on quickly. So some of the supports we provide, you know, like all of our alt schools, the TTC tickets, snack program, a hot lunch right now because of COVID, we have a hot lunch that's a grab and go. Uh, although we always have spaces where students can eat safely as well. Where are we located? We're located um, right at Donlands and Danforth Station. It's, it's a great, it's easy to get to. We're right on the subway line. And we're actually located within Kapamacha Q um, School, Wandering Spirit School. And this is a great opportunity for our students as well in terms of the relationships that we've built within the building. So for example, um, co-op, there's great co-op opportunities for our students to uh, take part in the elementary schools and do placements in the elementary schools. But we also share opportunities pre-COVID and hopefully post-COVID again, where students can actually from Kapamacha Q can take courses with Subway and vice versa. So as we try to find ways to round out the programming that we can provide by really utilizing the network of relationships that we've built um, as well. Um, just move on. So some of the photos of Subway. And just to get a sense though, Kapamacha Q is a much larger uh, building itself. And it means that we as Subway, we have access to our own gym. We have access to the weight room. Um, you know, we have those opportunities for a, a traditional graduation as well. So students, there's still that opportunity to walk across that stage, right? And have those experiences as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, this is the last piece as I begin to wrap up. I know that it's a long evening and I think the most important piece is to hear from our students this evening as well, is that 
I really encourage you that if you're interested in Subway, um, please reach out to me, send me an email. I would love to invite you to Subway to see the space, to get a sense of, is it the right fit? Um, and what kind of work can we do to meet, meet your needs as well? And if, so if you're looking at a variety of schools and sometimes my experience is that students want to go on to that collegiate, there's a hope that they'll move on from grade eight to grade nine, the natural progression that we often see ourselves going through. If you're choosing that um, collegiate, your catchment collegiate perhaps, and you find yourself perhaps it's not working out, know that the doors of alternative schools are not closed for you. These are ongoing conversations that can take place. So please never hesitate that if you do decide on a different school, but you're finding that it's not working, that our schools are still a viable option for you. And I myself at Subway would love to continue that conversation and discuss the options that exist at Subway as well, specifically. Um, I'm gonna hand it back over to Renee at this point. Thank you, Emily. Um, so now we're going to move to our student panel and I'll just get that set up very quickly. Okay, so to the students, you can uh, turn on your uh, videos now uh, and just unmute whenever you are called upon to uh, answer the question. So I'd like to welcome our students to this portion of our information session. I'll invite each of you to introduce yourself when I call your name. You can share with us your name, your school, why you joined an alternative school, and your future plans. And I'll invite Vanessa to introduce yourself first. Hi, my name is Vanessa. I'm representing Oasis Alternative School, specifically the Art and Social Change Program. And I decided to go to Alternative School because of the flexibility and the overall smaller community. And my future plan is hopefully to pursue art and speech. Thank you. Mads? Hi, I'm Mads and I am at City School. And um, I chosen alternative school out of necessity. I didn't make it very long in a mainstream school. And then I bounced around a bunch of section 23 schools and um, alternative school has been the best thing for me. Um, my future plans um, at this moment, though they're constantly changing is probably to uh, go into psychology. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm representing Avondale Secondary Alternative School. I chose to go to alternative school because I first heard about the smaller class sizes and then later figured out how it was much more personal and they offered much more one-on-one -on -one support, which was very much so important for me. Um, for future plans, I'm not sure yet, but knowing that I'm now in a school that I can finally be my comfortably myself, I can now have the opportunity to learn more about myself to figure out what I want to do. Thank you. Clementine? Hi, my name is Clementine. I'm from Alpha 2 Alternative School. Um, I was homeschooled before I started at Alpha 2, and both of my older brothers attended before me, so that's how I heard about and ended up going to an alternative school. 
Um, as far as future plans, my focus is visual art and specifically painting. So I'm thinking of pursuing something in that field. Thank you. Caitlin? Hi, I'm Caitlin. I go to Subway Academy One. Um, I chose to go to an alternative school because regular high schools didn't really work out for me. I struggled a lot with anxiety, so I needed a fresh start and um, it's really worked out for me. Um, I'm planning on graduating this year and in the future, I'm gonna go to university. Thank you, and Alyssa. Hi, my name is Alyssa. I attend Delphi Secondary Alternative School. So I chose Delphi because my previous school was very much community-based and I wanted to continue to learn in that kind of environment. So Delphi has been a perfect fit for me because it offers me strong academics, which I was looking for along with individual support from teachers. So in terms from my future pathway, I'm keeping my options open, but at this point I'm exploring law, mathematics, and visual arts. Thank you. So let's start with our first question. Uh, tell us about one of your favorite classes and I'll send that question first off to Sarah. So my favorite class is guitar. Funny enough, I didn't know that alternative schools even had an option for music because of this such a drastic smaller school environment. Um, and I've been involved in music since middle school and it was a very big part of me and I thought I would have to let that go. And I came and it was the best class I've had so far and I continue to learn so many new things and never fail to enjoy the class. Thank you. Uh, Caitlin, tell us about one of your favorite classes. Um, okay, so one of my favorite classes was definitely English last year. We, like Emily mentioned before, we focused on a podcast instead of following a book. Um, and it was really interesting. And it was, I don't know, it was just really cool to experience it a new way of doing English. You know, it wasn't just reading. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Vanessa, what was one of your favorite classes? Um, well, my art teacher is listening currently, so I feel inclined to say art, but I do really enjoy art. It was really fun, and I like that we had different mediums. I got to work with like abstract art as well as like uh, traditional art and also 3D art and sculpting, so I really enjoyed art, but I also enjoyed math and psychology, and I'm glad that they provide many programs in Oasis. Thank you. And Alyssa, why don't you tell us about one of your favorite classes? So my favorite class at this moment, which will make Renato very happy, is definitely my Canadian law class. So I enjoy learning about the different categories of law. So criminology, that has been an area of intrigue since you know I was really young and human rights because I'm passionate about equity and social justice. I love that I was able to learn enough that when I actually went to Ottawa, I could name all of the buildings and even had some of and just knew some of the history behind them. Thank you. All right, our next question. What supports have you accessed during your time at school? And I'll start that, uh, that question to Vanessa. Oh, um, well, Oasis Alternative School has provided many support systems. For me personally, I suffer with uh, mental illness such as anxiety. And I found that uh, my close relationship with my teachers in the school helped me pursue education without having to have my mental health be the back burner. And I really appreciate that. They also provide uh, food type support. They actually gave me like an entire bag of just snacks and treats. And that was really important to me as well, because I don't always have the funding for food at my house. So I really appreciate that. And, they, and overall, just the, the smaller classrooms they provide is just makes it easier to focus on your schoolwork and not worry about other stressors. Thank you. Mads, what support have you accessed during your time at school? Um, definitely the um, supports by way of other staff members other than the teachers, um, but my teachers have been really integral in keeping me attending as that used to be one of my issues. Um, and I've always struggled with 
the way we're taught um, in uh, mainstream schools and the teachers, especially at City, are incredibly good at adjusting and helping you out when you need it. Um, I had a politics class last year and uh, the teacher, Les, who's now the vice principal, um, helped adjust um, the class so that I could really focus on the model UN, which made the class so much better. And so, yeah. Thank you. Um, Clementine, can you share what supports you've accessed during your time at the school? So one thing that's really unique about the support we get at Alpha 2 is how much of it comes from the whole community. Of course, our teachers or mentors, as we call them, are big supports for us. Um, but we also have monthly community meetings that involve parents, mentors, and mentees. Um, we've had guest speakers and workshops, anything from alumni coming in to tell us about the past they've taken after graduating, um, to parents doing art and writing workshops. We had a sign language learning club run by a parent. Um, we also have had mentees participate in the board dual credit and co-op programs, of course, and that's been a really popular resource and really helpful for mentees um, pursuing careers in post-secondary education after Alpha. It's really whatever we're interested in, the community finds a way to facilitate that support and those opportunities for us. Um, and also because of the unique environment of the school, there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer support, whether it's specific skills that a more experienced mentee can offer guidance in, or just a more general path that an older mentee has taken, we all learn a lot from each other and get a lot of support from each other throughout our time at the school. Thank you. And Caitlin, what supports have you accessed during your time at the school? Um, at Subway, literally everyone who is an adult will help you. Um, you can go to any of the teachers, they are willing to help with anything, whether it's personal, whether it's um, helping facilitate a plan of how to get back on track or how to, you know, act, you know, um, make a plan that works for you. We also have like social worker who comes in once a week, who's awesome. And we have our resource teacher too, Sean, who's awesome as well. Um, he helps with tutoring and helping stuff with like applying to university, all that kind of stuff, so. Thank you. Next question. Tell us about the opportunity, opportunities you've had to make connections with teachers. And I'll start with Alyssa. So because Delphi provides just such a small school setting, we have more opportunities to not only connect with our teachers, but to develop strong learning partnerships with them that are based on just trust and respect. So a really cool thing about the school is that we're all on a first name basis. So for our students, this shows respect and it makes us feel like we're mature young adults. So it feels very empowering and it also just helps me personally with my confidence and motivation. I'm in grade 11 now and I've already had the same teachers for some courses like three or four times. So this means that they really understand not only my strengths and areas of interest, but they also know my areas of need and the strategies that work best for me. So I know that this could not have happened if I had attended a larger school or a collegiate. Thank you. Sarah, tell us about the opportunities you've had to make connections with teachers. Um, I found the nicest thing was just that the teachers saw us as equal and the respect was completely mutual, especially as other people have said before, how in most alternative schools, it's a first name basis. So it kind of really goes to the another level of that being on that personal level with your teachers and with the students, it just creates this balance. Um, like I've never had a bad day where not like one teacher fails to notice and check in and say, are you okay? Is there anything I can do to help? Anything like that. They always make sure that we know that they're there to help us, that they're there to support us, that all we need to do is just meet them in the middle and they'll help us with whatever we need. And on the fun part of it, they always have fun with us in the fun cool activities that we do. And it just makes it much more kind of of a comfortable, chill type of vibe that gets put out in the school. Thank you. And Clementine, can you tell us about the opportunities you've had to make connections with teachers? 
So it's a similar thing as others are saying, we're all on a first name basis and there's that foundation of mutual respect. Um, as far as the specifics for Alpha, everybody meets with their mentor and their parents at the beginning of the year to set their learning plan. Um, that is what we have in place of the traditional parent-teacher interviews, which I think is really important and keeps you involved and connected that way. Um, and then we meet with our assigned mentor regularly throughout the year as often as we need as we work towards um, those goals that we've set for ourselves. But because we are a smaller school, of course, everybody really knows everyone. The mentors are always around and you can talk to whoever you feel most comfortable talking to. And you always have that support and opportunity for connection open to you however and whenever you need it. Thank you. And our final question for the panel, and we'll have everyone answer this question. How has your alternative school prepared you for life beyond high school? And we'll start with Caitlin. So going to an alternative school has really helped me come out of my shell. Um, I have gained a lot of confidence in myself since coming to Subway. Um, and it's helped me realize that I can ask for help and that there are people willing to help. Um, so it's just kind of prepared me for that. And yeah, I believe in myself a lot more now. Um, and yeah. Thank you, that's awesome. Mads, how has your alternative school prepared you for life beyond high school? Um, alternative school has really prepared me in that it allowed me to figure out how I need to learn best. And I've figured out that a full course load with the, a mass amount of stress um, is not how I learn best. And when I'm in those situations, I don't enjoy learning. Um, and so it's taught me that maybe the traditional post-secondary stream is also not going to be um, exactly what I need. And so I may need to adjust it. And it's really taught me to um, balance um, like my life, my work and school, which I think is integral for um, just life in general and moving forward. Thank you. Clementine, how has your alternative school prepared you for life beyond high school? So because it's a self-directed school, I think I've really learned how to take initiative and leadership in my own education and my own life. Um, I'm learning how to set goals for myself and work towards them. Specifically for me, that involves building up my visual art portfolio and helping to organize as well as participating in a lot of school events. Um, just in the last month or so, we held our portfolio night, which was not just to demonstrate mentees' talents, it was also organized and hosted by mentees, myself included. Um, and we also held a holiday sale recently. We made baked goods and various art items, and we donated all the proceeds to Sprout House, which is an LGBTQ plus youth shelter. Uh, and that was mentee-led as well. We decided um, the charity we wanted to donate and everything around that. Um, so yeah, uh, to summarize, I feel that Alpha 2 really prepares you specifically for the life you want after graduation because you get to gain experience and all those things you might want to pursue post high school with the added support that the school provides. Thank you. Vanessa, how has your alternative school prepared you for life beyond high school? Uh, well, Oasis Alternative School really helped me bring more confidence towards myself when it came to education. I was not thinking I would ever graduate and Oasis gave me the opportunity to graduate and have that opportunity to then pursue uh, careers and go to um, college or university. And I'm really happy about that. I, I think that the confidence that they gave me to try new things and not just go with the traditional way of learning made it easier for me to feel confident in pursuing things that may not be traditional. And yeah, so that's why I would say. Thank you. Sarah, how has your alternative school prepared you for life beyond high school? Um, so I found specifically when I joined an alternative school setting that I figured out that there was a type of school that you could learn in a way that you needed to learn. And I didn't know how I needed to learn in the start because I was just complying in the mainstream school on how they were like, 
just had one option of learning. And when joining alternative schools, I had to take a step back and got that opportunity to go, where are my strengths and where are my weaknesses? And what can I ask of my teachers since they're allowing me to ask for supports on how to better my experience in learning? And then that can help me learn about myself so I can ask for that in the future because now I'm aware. I also found that since there's that personal continuous one-on-one support that my issues can finally be properly addressed so I can have good marks to do post-secondary. Thank you. And Alyssa, how has your alternative school prepared you for life beyond high school? So one of the ways in which Delphi has prepared me for success in the future is the strong focus on the development of learning skills and character education. So to be successful at this school, we have to have strong time management, problem solving, and critical thinking skills, as well as taking the initiative and just being organized in general. So my learning skills have also been harnessed by my experience in extracurricular activities. I have been a grade rep and currently I'm the secretary of the student council. So in this role, I have developed as a leader in terms of my confidence, communication skills, and the ability to coordinate and inspire my peers. Well, thank you so much. And just thank you for sharing your experiences with us and for bringing student voice to this information session. This was certainly the highlight of my evening. Uh, And I think I am speaking on behalf of all the staff who are here and probably the attendees too. So thank you so much. We are so proud of you and appreciate your involvement in tonight's event. Thank you so much. I will stop pinning you now because I'm sure you would like that. (laughs) I'll do that before I hand it over. So I, I believe I'm, I am the one person between you and the rest of your evening, but I really needed to spend just a few minutes, if you don't mind, um, coming from a place of deep gratitude for what happened over the last couple of hours. For all the students and caregivers that have been listening, thank you for giving us your time and really learning about the variety of alternative schools. As you saw tonight, our schools are dedicated to meeting the needs of our students who are looking for unique settings that meet their students' needs. You heard some of the common themes, the arts, social justice, how we really strengthen independent learners, how curiosity is an expectation and it's such an asset and how flexibility of the work that our staff do to make the students, make our students feel like they are in a really, really good place. Thank you for being here tonight. Another special thanks go to our staff for their participation, from our wonderful moderator, Renee, to our teacher presenters, to our administrators for being here and spending the time to share with us their expertise and knowledge. Thank you so very much for being able to present your schools in such a vivid and lively way that's going to hopefully influence some decisions that are going to be made over the next few weeks. And of course, the final thanks is to our very, very special student representatives, to Vanessa, Clementine, Mads, Caitlin, Alyssa, and Sarah. Your answers, your candidness, your insights and personal stories were definitely, I agree with you, Renee, the highlights of what tonight was meant to be. You brought your lived experiences and just everything for what it is that makes our alternative school so special. We use the words distinct, we use alternative, but they are really, really special places. And hopefully you, uh, what you shared with us tonight is going to has, is, will have ripple effects um, among your, your student friends in the, in the schools. You talked about engagement. You talked about student choice and how you are active participants in making that choice. You talked about feeling safe and you talked about feeling respected. Those are things that are not necessarily part of the alternative program, but clearly every single alternative school in our system makes you feel that way. And those of you, and you brought that to our attention. So thank you very much for that. You were absolutely amazing. Absolutely. the uh, And this is why we saved you. We saved you best for last because we knew you were going to blow, up, blow our minds tonight. So thank you so very much for everything. Um, to all who are wondering if there is a recording of this, yes. 
There will be recorded and it will be on a couple of places in, on TDSP's website. And we look forward to hearing from you. Each and every one of our, our leaders who presented their schools have given you the contact information. Please, we welcome you in our schools. Pop in, visit, and really get to know us. Thank you very much again. Have a lovely evening. And um, if we don't see each other again, probably not. Have a safe and wonderful holiday break. Good night.